Alrighty then, it's time to start working on the uh, incredible uh, watch that uh, I'm looking at right now. This is the uh, balance cock for it. Uh, and it, it is a nice uh, configuration. As you can see, the regulator for this balance cock is right here. And it effectively grabs this here and moves it uh, left and right. I've already removed the two screws on the top. It's uh, funny when I removed the first screw, uh, I went to go get the second one without removing, without taking this first screw out and uh, putting it aside. And it jumped up and it landed on the jewel, but I couldn't see it. And I was like looking all over for the screw, but it was there. So, so now I'm going to wedge this um, the uh, cap jewel off here. And this is the last job I've got to do before I uh, before I am complete with this uh, particular watch. So just lift the uh, cap off nice and easy. There we go. I think I could probably just grab that with my tweezers. And I went, decided to go back home. I decided to go back home. These are not easy. You're working against gravity here. So there we go. So that's now out, um, so I can clean the cap jewel on the other side. And I've already doused this baby in um, lighter fluid, but I can look at that and clean it as well. So I can clean this right on the mat. It looks like there's dried up fluid on there, right, as I'm, just as I'm looking down. So, And somebody told me online that I need to clean my Rodico, and I think they're right, because my Rodico was pretty gunky. I bought it at gunkyrodico.com. Peg this baby out. Actually the jewel wanted to lift completely so which is fine I guess but I could take it out and take it out and work on it too. It's the other option so I have my Rodico up close looks dirty, but it's actually not that bad. You just stretch it out, stretch out the Rodico, and then put it back down again. Let me adjust this camera here so it's a little bit more of the back. There we go. There we go. Look at that. It had some sagging going on. So let me just grab this jewel from the top again. See if I can just pop this thing out. I don't really need to, but maybe I should. It might not come out this way. I may have to poke it from the bottom, but I don't want to. I think what I did before is just rotate it in the setting. I don't need to take it out, so what am I doing here? There we go. Just want to make sure that jewel hole is completely clean down here. And there are no issues at all. So I've pegged it out nicely. Jewel looks like it's in good condition. Another one bites the dust. Diddly, tim, tim. Another one bites the dust. Diddly. Another one bites the dust. And another one's gone. And another one's gone. Another one bites the dust. Hey, when I get you to another one bites the dust. 
that's the words. That should be good there. Looks very clean. Now, this is a little pad here I use for resting the balance so there's no s stress on the um, balance itself. Oh man, there's a big chunk of guck on that jewel. On the setting. So that obviously needed some cleaning. 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 These are beautiful settings, gotta admit. They're really nice. So I made a video yesterday about all these people that get all kinds of views for stupid videos and I know these watch videos you got to be a watch enthusiast to enjoy these because if you aren't it uh, these are boring if you're not if you don't like watches and you don't like repairing watches or you don't like any of the stuff that I do then the videos are boring so what I could do videos on I did have videos on how to play guitar like how to play tears in heaven and stuff like that so I did make videos on that in the past So it's, so it's, this is a, come on, try to get that little bit of lubrication on the cap gel here. And somebody told me I should get zero, zero tweezers. From uh, Horatech zero zeros, but I couldn't. I could find Horatech zero, but not zero zero, which is like interesting. But there's my technique. I would like to put this back exactly the way I found it. This one here does not have a little marking, so I'm going to put it in like this. See if it goes in. If it doesn't, that went in nicely actually. Now I have to line up the grooves. That's lined up. Screw number one. I don't think I'm shaking as much today as I was yesterday, but I did still have a coffee. Still is really touchy stuff, man. Touchy, stuffy. As you can see. Still shaking a bit this morning. Well, I'm not going to tighten that until I get the other screw in. Nah. Dropped it. Still a bit shaky this morning. I had a coffee earlier. I haven't worked out yet. Usually when I work out I usually get more shaky after I work out, but it's probably the stupid coffee. Normally I have no shakes whatsoever. There's one. And there's the other one. So here that cap jewel is done. D O N done. I'm gonna have a peek at this balance again. Okay, that's in mint condition. Both pivots are good. And I'm going to I cleaned that in my little elevator yesterday, so I think I showed you the elevator, but I'll give you a look at it right now. So let me stop recording and set this up. 
All right, here's my incredible invention. So the challenge here was to have a a uh, bounce cock on a tack, right, and be able to clean it. And I've I've taken this and dipped it in water, or sorry, dipped it in alcohol. But where do you, what do you do with the bounce cock? Do you throw it all in? You get a big, huge jar of alcohol, or what do you do? So what, what I did was I wanted to if I take this off you'll see that these aren't threaded on the top so this can just lift right up just lift it up carefully here like so I got a couple of coins in the bottom here that I've that I've I uh, used my uh, skills and and uh, tap and die and I tap these babies I tap these screws here I, uh, or I tapped the hole in the bottom here and I dyed these screws here and I dyed the bottom of this here because I can actually unscrew that it comes out as you can see I won't bother unscrewing it but it comes out and if I flip this around you'll see I've got some legs in the bottom that's what it looks like on the bottom little knobbies and I use Loctite on these here to keep that in place I didn't bother loctiting this because it's not going anywhere anyway. So, but when I turn this, I didn't want these to turn. I use four, it was a four point seven. So my drill was a one, one eighth inch drill. So I use a four point seven for tap and die. I glued these two these plates together to drill the holes. Um, so I made sure the holes were perfect. This hole here is a little bigger than that because I thought I wanted more freedom when I was going to only put one of these coins on here and the whole thing was going to lift but I realized quickly that when it's only one of them it sort of tilts sideways and then it jams so I decided to use a second one so that's what that looks like and so here's how it works let me just get this back in here you gotta just tap this down like that there we go so that's how it works so take this little bucket here uh, the last thing I need to do is make a brass bucket that fits perfectly in here. So I'm going to make or buy a, a brass bucket, and once I get the bucket, I will, I will again, lock tight the bucket down to the bottom plate so I can have it removable. And you tuck it in a bit tight so the bucket can has to be this width. And then I put the lighter fluid in the bucket. I want, I may want the bucket removable, which means I have to basically take the bucket, put a dent on the bottom of this bucket and then put a dent on here so they match so that the, the two dents are matching and that way when I put it in place it always it's always in exactly the right place and then I take I'll just show you what I do with the with this balance here so I take the balance very carefully and I put it onto the tack like that just just down like this there it is there and I had to use my lathe to make the tack so it's, I had to get it the exact right height. Now, this would be filled with lighter fluid, and as you can see, it's, uh, it's up high, right? So you take this, and you turn the screws at the same time. It's like a little elevator. See, this is the infamous lift, and you can see it'll go pretty high. And when I do this, the, the, the uh, pivot on the bottom very gently touches the bottom of this but you don't, you can maintain the strength and the spring. You can do that, or you can reel it all the way up to the top. And I did the reeling it all the way up to the top will, will wet the complete spring, right, with lighter fluid, and that's what I want to do. So I won't bother doing that there. But you can see the control over this is easy. You just do this, like that, it goes down, and you do it the other way, it goes up. So I did this before, um, and then sometimes the elevator gets stuck. <laughs> Now, I could make that other hole a little bit bigger or just file it a bit. So, normally it doesn't get stuck. But anyway, I just reel it all the way back down again. There we go. One side's down, the other side's now down. And move it up just a bit. And that's it. So, this is it. So, that's a pretty cool design. It's my design. It's a unique, unique design. Um, and I probably could make money making these for people because uh, it makes it really easy to clean a balance. Uh, balance and, and hairspring without having to move the balance the, the hairspring from the balance and as I showed you earlier I could easily take that jewel out and then clean that jewel on the top peg it out and then oil 
the uh, cap jewel, put it back in, screw it down, and you're good to go. Um, I did look very carefully at the pivots, and there's nothing not, nothing wrong with the pivots on the inside or the other side. If you really wanted to be gospel perfect, you could take everything apart and then clean the pivot on the top. But but when that p pivot is riding in that jewel, it's pretty much cleaned up. And as long as it's it's oiled on the top, and you get the gunk, the old there was no oil on this; it was all dried out. And as long as you remove that, you're good. So so that's the uh, that is the I gotta call it the I gotta give it my name, right? The the the, uh, the JD lift, the JD uh, balance cleaner. There you go. Call it the JD balance cleaner. And I'll patent this baby later on. So I'm sure you can build them. But that's uh, my design, and of course, I'll never get rich with my designs. Uh, like my automatic guitar tuner from years ago. You gotta build it to be rich, boys. You gotta build it to be rich. So that's it. That's, that's that. So let's get back to reassembling uh, the watch. Alright, when you get in the arbor back in the barrel, um, what you do is you line up the hook with the, uh, with the hairspring and you get your screwdriver in there and you just twist it a bit. Hoping this works until the spring goes through. I'm looking at it and I think I've got myself success. I think I do anyway. And just to make sure you grabbed it properly, take the other end, try not to touch anything with my fingers, but take the other end of the, uh, of the arbor like that and then pull it to see if it grabbed the spring. And yeah, it did. So it's got the spring nicely. And then I want to oil I'm going to grab my metal block here because I want to oil the, um, put some oil in the spring. Just a little tiny dab of do ya. A little dab of do ya on the spring. <clears throat> I should talk with a little more enthusiasm. Not like I'm half dead. So, or tell you stories. Story about a man named Jed. Poor mountaineer barely f kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some crude and up from the ground come a bubble, or food rather. Up from the ground come a bubbling crude. And the first thing you know, oh, Jed's a millionaire. The kin folk said, Jed, move away from there. Said California is a place you ought to be, so he hustled up the truck and he moved to Beverly. I am good with old songs from TV shows. So what I do is I take some oil and I put it here, 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 and here. And that'll work its way in the spring over time. So no issue there. And also, I want to put a little dab of dewy on the arbor here. But not a lot. Just a very little tiny bit here. And that'll spread around nicely. There we go. Green Acres is the place to be. Farm living is the life for me. Land spreading out so far and wide. Hey, keep Manhattan, just give me that countryside. New York is where I'd rather stay. I get allergic smelling hay. I just adore that penthouse view. Darling, I love you. Give me a park avenue. The stores, the chores, the fresh air, the Times Square. You are my wife. Goodbye to my life. Green Acres, we are there. Anyway, <clears throat> so this has got a uh, T on the end of the mainspring here, so you just have to line a hook up on that T with a little opening there. There's two openings, a small one and a big one. The small one is, is lined up with this. The big one is used to put your screwdriver in and pop up the cap. That's how that's done. So and I'm dying to touch this with my other hand. I should just put two pairs of gloves on and get it over with, right? So I just want to make sure that is lined up nicely, right? Like so, like that, and, and then I can close it, and I should be able to close it with my screwdriver. See if I can do that. That side looks like it's snugging in nicely. 
Let's just get it over to the other side now. And snug that one in. Of course the barrel popped out. Way to go. Way to go. I know I'll get it in eventually. I've got to get this side in here and make sure I'm not screwing anything up. Come on! This is pissing me off. Something happened. Is that in there? Looks like it is in there. I just have to tuck it in on either side of the spring so it's not sticking up. Like it's not wanting to go in there. That's in perfectly right there. I never had a problem getting that in before. Yeah, it's aligned. Just have to use more force, I guess. I don't want to break anything. <laughs> oh, this is pissing me off. I may have to take this apart and try it again. which I don't want to do. I guess I could tap it with a stake and see if it goes down. I'll try tapping it with a stake first. So that did go down. I don't think I've ever had a problem like this before, but I just took take the edge like that and tap it lightly with a stake. And it tucks in there. And that is tucked in there now, so there's no issue. The caps back on the barrel. I think everything is fine. Let me um, rotate that barrel again to make sure we're good. To remember which way I rotated it before. I was rotating it, I think, this way. Yeah, that's nice and loose. So, you know, just test that like that. So that's working fine. It's springing back for me. So there's no interference with the, uh, the lid or anything. So it's perfect. Done. D-O-N-N-Y. Dunny. And you got green acres and and uh, what else? So <clears throat> I'm, I told you I'm a guitar player, not a vocalist, right? So, but if you really want to hear Spider-Man, I can sing Spider-Man for you. Diddle 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 Spider Man, Spider Man does whatever a spider can. Spins a web any size, catches thieves just like flies. Hey there, there goes the Spider Man. Is he strong? Listen, bud, he's got radioactive blood. Can he swing from a thread? Take a look overhead. Hey there, there goes the Spider Man in the thrill of night. At the scene of a crime, like the speed of light, he arrives just in time. I'm gonna make sure this thing here is not on the edge. So, do it like that. Spider Man, Spider Man, friendly neighborhood Spider Man. I'll admit he's ignored. Action is his reward. To him, life is a great big hang up. Wherever there's a hang up, and they do say it twice. And not a bang up. You'll find a Spider Man. There you go. We got three theme songs from old movies. So, so now we're going to reassemble this. And um, I have to remember how the heck I took it apart. So I'm going to look at my photo for it to make sure I've got everything right. So I ended up having to do voiceover here, um, putting the center wheel in and adjusting that, making sure it moves smoothly. And uh, I made a mistake here because I thought there was a, it looked like there was a little bit of a dirt in the leaf there, but those were cleaned nicely in, a, uh, in the lighter fluid. And when I put these wheels in, I actually put this one in the wrong place. It fit nicely, but it was the wrong wheel. 
and I put this one in and I was like okay this isn't going into the jewel what's going on here and so I said I thought I would have to uh, fix that um, somehow so I th looked at my my phone again and to see exactly what was going on here I left it recording just so you could see sometimes you get these things kind of screwed up and this is a full plate uh, pocket watch which is a huge pain by the way and I was like oh okay this is how it goes and then I put the escapement in and it's kind of it doesn't go usually the watches like this the escapement goes first and then the other wheels go on top but this one's got an odd configuration and I had to make sure that escapement was in the jewels as well this is a very very difficult watch to reassemble because the uh, there's cap jewels on on uh, every wheel so you can't it's very difficult to see if the jewels actually or the pivot has actually gone into the jewel it's a little trick I've figured out a couple of years back and take a big little slice of Rodico and put the uh, pallet fork on the top plate and then because when you put it on the bottom plate it just falls over so you put it on the top plate and then you just kind of stick the Rodico to the plate itself like like I'm doing there but then I realized that too much Rodico was on there and it was probably going to interfere with the escapement so I after I looked at it and I was like ah you know what this might not work so I decided to uh, take half the Rodico off and just use the uh, Rodico on part of the escapement so you didn't see that but oil that up and then I um, put that down and I usually put a couple screws down first I don't tighten them at all I just put them down so if I'm looking sideways the plate doesn't fall off and um, tighten those up just a bit uh, I already the barrel I don't need to put in until the end and then I have to tweak it a bit so I started uh, farting with all that now I'm putting the barrel in the bottom part of the arbor is square so I had to take the uh, the uh, watch actually out of the movement holder and then look at the uh, bottom part uh, the face of the watch to see whether the uh, square part of the barrel was going through the plate so that's what I was doing there I was just farting with that to see if it worked and then I looked there and I said oh, okay and all I needed to do was take a screwdriver and and just tweak it a bit then I put the uh, the bridge over the barrel the bridge over troubled water um, and I do oil all those too, so very careful. Don't want to scratch anything. Very nice watch. Uh, and that was in. And then I just shake the uh, the barrel a little from the gear side to make sure that it's still moving and nothing's stuck. But oil the barrel a bit just to make sure that that's nicely lubricated. And I oil the center wheel as well. And uh, then, and <clears throat> I was gonna see whether. Uh, this thing would tick for me, right? Actually, this time I was looking at the uh, the winding mechanism and just trying to wind this thing up. But I was oiling the uh, all of the the uh, winding mechanism here, the the keyless mechanism as it's called. So just putting the right type of oil on the keyless mechanism. Um, just to, just it needs it needed some t tender loving care. It hasn't been oiled in 100 years probably. So I did all that and I go wind it up uh, to put a bit of power on the watch to see if this thing will run for me. And I know I had some trouble uh, with the, uh, there's a gear in there. So the gear is a set, one of the setting gears that's in there. Uh, not that one there that I'm putting in. It's like an intermediate gear. Uh, one of the uh, setting gears has two sets, two teeth missing in it. Now if you wind, the, if you set the watch fast, it'll work. But if you set it slowly, um, it, it stops. So you have to pull the winding mechanism out, put it back in again and play with it until it actually sets the time properly. Uh, if you don't know that, you're going to be forcing it and break another tooth, and I bet you that's what happened. One tooth probably broke, and then the owner tried to force it again. I might try to find that wheel. Um, I'll see if that wheel is available. I'll send a note out to my friends there and watch land to see if I can find that wheel with the uh, sub wheel on top of it. Now I'm putting a little uh, power onto the uh, the uh, pocket watch with my uh, bench key um, and it uses the, the larger not the largest one I have but one of the larger bench keys and I was uh, just trying to figure out that wheel um, I think I emailed uh, the owner to say uh, you know you got a problem with that wheel buddy I'm, I'm actually texting him right there and saying uh, 
what do you want me to do about it? Um, this wheel would be very difficult to find. I don't know if I've ever seen a wheel that was like, like in that configuration before, but I know you can play with that setting mechanism to actually, uh, actually get it going, like actually set the time on it. You just have to, uh, you gotta watch it. And I was wondering when I first got this, and it got stuck, and I was like, that's why. And I had to back it off and then go forward again. Um, and it was because of the, uh, the the teeth on that on the on the uh, on that one gear. So we'll see whether uh, the owner wants to do anything about that or or uh, just leave it the way it is because it is a nice watch and a nice movement and it what it does run. It's just a little bit tricky to set. So it's not a tough job to replace that wheel. It's just hard to get that wheel. That's all. There you go. There's my overdub. All right, just to let you know here, we've got a uh, problem with the gear that I never saw before. I'll just point with my little pointer here. So this is a gear for setting the time, this little tiny gear here, and there's two teeth missing on it. So it's, um, it's odd that there'd be teeth missing on it, but there are two teeth. I've asked a gentleman who's watched this is, does he, is he aware of that? So there's a tooth missing right here. And if I just rotate the, um, just turn that, turn that a bit. Let me see if I can turn the watch so I can access this just a bit. There we go. It's in the winding mode right now. Let me pull this out like that, and then you can see those teeth are missing, right? I mean, you can you can play with it to skip it by, and then and then do it that way. Um, I'm backing it up right now, and that's forward. So there's two teeth missing here. That tooth there, right where it's trying to go by, and then a little bit further on. And if I just nudge that with a toothpick, it's probably going to move forward a bit. Just don't want to do too much more damage on this thing, so not my damage, by the way. Just thought I'd make, just thought I'd tell you that. So here's I think I can go in and out and then get rid of it. So hang on. Skip that, go back in again. Skip that, go back in again, and then turn. And then out. Out like that. It's not going to turn like this. It's going to try to wind. Skip that. Go back in again and turn like this. It looks like it's working, but it's actually not. You have to go really fast and then it'll set the time. Or you just have to pull the lever out and play with it until it sets the time. And that's probably what the last person did when they were playing with this. But you can't set it all the way out and then do it slowly because it'll um, it'll jam. So that's going to be, that's a very tough wheel to find. I'm not sure whether it's worth finding, but I may ask around and see if there's anybody out there that's got a wheel like that. Now I'm going to see if this baby will tick for me. I'm not sure if it will. Actually, before I do that, I need to put just a little tiny bit of that oil on, this, on the uh, impulse jewels. And I can actually transfer it from the, uh, from the uh, escapement. So if I just put a little dab of dewy on the escapement, that'll transfer over to the impulse jewels. Now I know it's out of focus, but you can see me from the top, and I just want to be able to put a few of this little dabs on the feet in here. Like that. And I think I... Like that. I 
like that. I actually might be able to put it on the impulse jewel itself. Just hang on. So I'm recording this, what the heck, right? Pull this thing out of the way. I'm not sure how. Anyway, let me go in here and see if I can touch that. Impulse jewel. Did it. Wow. Now, if I was really bright, I would have done it before I put the uh, palette fork back in. But not that bright I guess. So I'm just gonna see if I can put that balance back in now and let's see if it's ticking. I'm hoping and praying. I do both of these things occasionally when I, uh, I'm not singing Spider-Man for a living. So I'm gonna bring the balance over here. Switch glasses. Glasses. And the pellet fork is on which side? Palette fork is on this side, so I got to enter it from this way. Correct, correct. Which means I got to grab it on this side. Like that. And I want to, actually, I want to enter it this way. I think we'll see how successful I am. I'm going to go in this way, like that, and then bring it around like this. Do some praying here. I'm on the wrong side. Wrong side. Of course, I dropped it down. I'm going to drop it back up again. Why is that on the wrong side? It's got to be way over here, I think. side again? Perhaps. Yeah, it is. It's over banking on that side. What the heck? This is stupid. Let me just push that pallet fork over the other way. So now the jewel's got to be on this side to enter. So I'll just do this and then move it over like that. Oh my god, it's banking again. What's going on here? Not banking, it's just stiff. I think it is anyway. All right, I was basically forking with the um, with the uh, pallet fork for the last. I'd say hour. Um, I tell you, I effing hate full plate pocket watches. 
That's why they invented the non-full plate pocket watch. Because the full plate pocket watches are almost impossible to get back together again. Very, very difficult. So it's, uh, I had to take the jewel off the top because this has a lot of jewels on it so you can't see the pivots come through. So I had to remove the jewel from the top in order to get access to the, um, make sure this goes on the right way again. Let me look at this again from the other side and see if there's oil on there still. No, nope. gonna dab a piece of oil on there. A little tiny bit of lubricant again. Um, I'm telling you, I was freaking almost ready to toss everything. It just kept playing with that stupid pallet fork. That pallet fork doesn't go in nicely, right? It's a full plate and it's kind of the pallet fork is on one side and it's on the other side and it's just like, oh my god, stop it. So I was uh, going insane. I was like, okay, do I take the whole watch apart again and see if I can fix this? Do I, what do I do here? So I was at the point where I was almost ready to take the whole watch apart again just so I could put the pallet fork, put it back in place. It was very, 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 very frustrating. I don't think I've been that frustrated in a long time, but I don't like full plate pocket watches. I'll have to send an email to Bori because they're such a pain in the ass. They're, um, they're, uh, they just don't like putting all these wheels back in is an art. I don't even know if it's, it's a science, it's an art. Because once you get these wheels out, and Bori's probably done this before with his watches, um, it's like a job and a half to get everything together. And all I'm doing is, all I'm doing here is ticking the uh, the arm on the inside just to make sure it snaps back and forth, which it's doing now. That's why the balance wouldn't turn, because the pivot looked like it was in, but it wasn't in. And of course, you don't want to break the uh, you don't want to break the, the the pivot on the end. So you you're like, okay, I put it in there, but it missed the jewel hole, right? So it's like, what do I do now? Um, and that's a it was a big pain in the. Uh, I'm gonna swear it's a big pain in the ass. So uh, so this was not relaxing at all. Normally pocket watch work is okay if you're just cleaning it, but I think when you're cleaning it for someone else, yeah, even for myself, I've done full plate pocket watches before that I have and I get they just piss me off. Little tiny women's watches and full plate pocket watches I don't like. Because they're just too too much ticking of the wheels to get the damn thing working properly. So Anyway, I think I got it going now. I think I got it going now, so I'm going to just put this balance back in and see if I'm lucky or not. So I got to go from the left hand side. I'm praying again, okay? Here we go. Part trois. Even not, not even past part deux, it's part trois right now. So settle it down nicely. Settle it down. Settle it down, and then see if this thing will run for me. I think it wants to run. It wants to run. Ta-da! So now i got to make sure this is in with all the pivots in the right place. And Put this screw back in here this old baby's got this old baby has got problems and before I tighten this screw down I'm going to look in the front to make sure that everything is kosher Yeah, that's good stuff. It's running. I'm 
There we go. So I think I'm going to case this while I got it operating nicely and then let it run. And just let it run. holding it up like this because I don't want that balance to touch anything. But let me just push the hand pull the hands up for a second. These tweezers are not sensitive enough. And I definitely don't want the watch to touch anything here. Try to take it from the edge here. Edge, edge, edge. Like that. And where is that second hand? There it is. You're not getting the absolute close-ups right now, but I'll pull the camera back a bit. I'm just tightening up the uh, dial screws here. I want to get this thing back together so it's in good health. I still think there's problems with the uh, end shake and stuff like that, but this is a very old watch. When I put it in this position here, it's, it's trying to run and it just and I put it here, it's no problem. But I put it just like this, it has issues, which is, I would take a year to figure that one out. So it's uh, not worth it sometimes. But I'll have a chat with Bori about it anyway. So I'm not sure how I would di diagnose that issue, because it might be the whole gear train is a hundred years old and that doesn't help <laughs> right right now I think I'll put the uh, watch in the case before I uh, attempt to uh, be very careful here I don't want to scratch anything get this out of the way so this would be cased the dust covers on this side so it's going to be cased from below, like this. So it's going to go in like this. Turn the crown around a little bit, and then just kind of ease it in like that. There we go. This thing is touchy. I think the half screw was on this side. The half screw, the half screw.
I'm not sure why it's causing slowing down just a bit and speeding up again. Maybe I'm touching it somewhere. It was running exceptionally well there, but it is perfectly clean. So that is not the issue. These screws are very tricky to put in because they're... There we go. There we go. See, that's ticking really well. Just close the door on it. And then just let it run for a while. Still running well. I'm just going to let that run overnight and then I'll put the hands on tomorrow. But I'm just going to rest the hands in here so I don't lose them. on top so nothing gets too dusty and I'm not closing it down I'm just gonna leave it like this and uh, check it out tomorrow and see make sure it's running it's all good there was one position where you turn it ever so slightly sideways but this being a very old watch it's that is a very very difficult thing to diagnose I'm not sure what it would be. Probably take me a week solid playing with it um, to see if there's what's wrong with it. Could be the wheels, could be some of the... Uh, everything looked fine. Everything is in position right now. It's ticking with a pretty good amplitude, but not really sure. Um, it's an old watch, so it needed some attention. It was gummed up. It's nicely oiled and lubricated and everything. The balance... When I turn that balance, though, it works in almost all positions except for one position and that could be end shake or side shake on one of the uh, wheels or the jewels look fine so so uh, it could be side shake on one of the uh, on one of the pivots or something I'm not sure what that would be in that position it could be the uh, pallet fork and the weight of the pallet fork in one direction causing the issue so anyway not sure whether that's uh, something I can fix or or not so I'll just gonna I'm gonna end this video now it's working but I haven't put the hands back in because I'm gonna let it run and uh, I'll make this video so you can enjoy it and then maybe another one after if I put the hands back in again thanks for watching so there's what I got it running at pretty darn good. That's a 248 degree amplitude which is really strong. The bead error is 2 milliseconds which isn't too bad for an old watch like this. And it's running at minus 37 um, seconds per day which actually isn't too bad. It can I can adjust that. Now the amplitude's up to 252 which is like phenomenal. And it's just running a little bit slow. That can be very easily adjusted. So I'm just going to let this run overnight. And um, then I'll adjust the, uh, the rate. And once it's all together and running, we'll make another video really quickly there to have a look at it. 251. Wow. That is an amplitude.